All right, guys, today is April 3rd, and Justin and I uh, finally made it out to the farm to start some of the burn projects. Um, we got some ideal conditions today. We got a south southeast wind. Um, we're at the uh, five acre food plot here starting our, our burn. So uh, we started burning around the uh, muddy blind here just to kind of secure that. Started our back burn here on the north edge. And uh, so we're going to kind of work our way around um, to get this field burned. And then uh, we're going to drop down to the bottom and hit a few other spots. But um, been looking forward to these conditions here all spring. And finally, we'll get a few projects done. All right, guys, uh, Justin and I are on this point stand field here that actually borders um, a neighboring property. And we kind of discussed earlier how uh, critical these uh, fire breaks are. In our initial stages, learning this whole game and how to do this, uh, this was one of our trouble areas. We actually had fires jump the fence line and uh, got into the corn stalks. And that's just a really stressful situation, not necessarily for us, but neighbors. Um, and then having fire departments involved, we've had that game happen as well. So uh, Justin come in here and put this alfalfa strip in, got a really nice fire break. And uh, using the wind and the back burn method here, it's gonna be a low stress um situation and uh, we're going to try to get this field knocked out so just going to want to really stress on fire breaks safety and then uh, working the game of the wind as well all right so we're going to start this fire break edge use the wind in our favor this is going to be our back burn edge here we get this whole north side completed we'll work through the east side and then we'll be able to get safe enough that we can come back and start the head fire. All right guys I just want to touch base real quick on what we mean by a back burn. So we've got a southeast wind which is the wind is blowing in my face. Um, so we're going to start the fire on the back edge or the north side. That way the fire is virtually burning its way into the, into the wind. It's slow, it's under control. Um, and then that way we can control this fire at our will. Um, and then once we are feeling safe, we can come around the back side, start the headwind, and then finish out the little section. So that's uh, one thing you just want to take into account is which way, way the wind's blowing which way you want to start your fire into the back burning and then finish it up with the headwind. All right guys, just want to briefly touch base in regards to how key fire breaks are. Um, Justin and I were kind of just discussing them, you know, 15 years of experience doing this. This is essential for this specific reason, but also it creates food for deer, you know, year round. So as you can kind of see right now, we're in the bottom. We're just using the headwind to take this fire as fast as possible. Um, rip these bottom fields and go, but we couldn't do this unless we had the, uh, the fire break. We got CRP sitting here and behind us we've got uh, a crep program with some beautiful oaks and so forth and uh, it's really helping to contain this fire and that allows us to move on to the next field. So as you can see it gets going really well and you can't feel the heat but we surely can at about 50 feet away so time to keep moving. All right, guys, so I just want to quick touch on our tools that we're using today. Obviously, uh, we have fire breaks that are set up uh, to contain our, our uh, burns and so forth. And uh, so virtually, we got a, an awesome drip torch that helps, uh, you know, the ease of getting a fire going and so forth. So we got a third gas and then uh, we got two thirds worth of diesel. Um, and then obviously, if you guys haven't used one of these, they're super slick. You virtually get your fire started. And then you can just drag it along the edge to get your back burning. Um, and then you can come back and start your headwind uh, when you're ready to do that. Um, to help contain, backpack blower is fantastic. It is absolutely amazing how much uh, you know, power these will put out. And it'll, it'll help you get some of those little fires out that you don't need uh, um, going. So virtually this is what we use on our yearly projects for burning and uh, gets us going. But as you 
as you're burning, you always have uh, great opportunities to find some hidden antlers that um, you can't find in the food plots and so forth. And here we go, we got our first one off of our first burn. That's pretty cool. Maybe a nice little two year old. But well, we got a couple of deer that we're actually in search of, so hopefully in some of these fields we'll end up finding um, some other sides. But it's a great opportunity to find some horns as we're going. Driving up and look at that. One of the major sheds we were looking for. Super Freak. Stuck upside down in the mud. Alright guys, we're at one of the food plots here. We just got done burning and um, some of you may have thought, well, why are we put down winter rye in the in the fall on top of our beans? And as you guys can see, I mean, it, this spot is perfectly green. It's got tons of forage. Um, so it's doing a couple things for us. Obviously, it's giving the deer um, that essential food when the timber's not green, the clover's not quite greened up yet enough. Um, and then it's adding nutrients to the soil. So when we come back in here and get ready to plant the beans, we're going to go ahead and uh, kill it with Roundup and then we can drill right through it with uh, the Genesis. But um, this is why we do it because we don't want to take any food away from the deer, give them the opportunity to have something to eat and uh, start off the year right. So this is why it's, it, it looks awesome and um, it's serving the purpose. All right, so we just finished up our last burn for today. Um, it was a great weekend as far as our burns go. We got a lot done. Uh, we burned a lot of fields. Everything went really well. So the key with the burns, I know we've mentioned this several times, is you've got to take your time. You've got to be safe. Um, you've got to know your wind direction. And you've got to have your fire break. So we had all those things in place this weekend. Uh, the winds were perfect. Uh, the fire breaks uh, were wide. They were green. They were doing well. And it was just very low stress. So it was a fun weekend. We weren't fighting fires or worried about where it was going to go. Everything went really well. So uh, the reason we burn those grasses, just in case you're wondering, is those prairie grasses, all that green growth in the fall dies off, then you get that thick, heavy thatch. So when you go through with those fires, you're going to remove all that dead layer, and it's going to allow those things to really take off. And uh, we've just found every year when we can burn, um, the stands just look so much better. Uh, keep some weed pressure down and things as well, but I really recommend every few years, um, if you've got in those prairie grass fields, that you try to get those burned off. But um, it was a great weekend for that, and now we're going to be moving on to our next project. So I've got a big TSI, a big timber plan that we're going to be working on, so I'm going to bring you some of those segments, and then we're going to be walking uh, right into our spring food plots. So things are warming up and drying off pretty quickly, so next few weeks we're going to be getting going on that. So I already spread some fertilizer this weekend, and we'll be getting ready to plant some alfalfa maybe next weekend. So we're going to start bringing you some TSI and some food plotting, but hope you guys enjoyed the burn segment. Um, be safe out there, and thanks for watching Antler University. Hey guys, it's April 3rd, and today uh, myself, Jim, and my brother Jeremy are at Jim's farm, and we're working on a controlled burn on a small field east, east of his house. We talked about this field earlier in the fall and we wanted to make this more of a bedding area for the whitetails and make it a better habitat. So today we're tackling the controlled burn. We've got the gym on the blower behind me and I wanted to just take a quick second and talk about how we do our controlled burns. Um, I know everybody's got a little different variation of it, but <clears throat> biggest thing for us is uh, fire breaks. Get those mowed in. That way if the flames do kind of get out of your uh, sight a little bit, it gives it a chance for the flames to die down and you get to get caught up and uh, put it out. We always like to have some water. We'll carry around a backpack sprayer and we'll bring extra water in a 30-gallon um, tank on the side-by-side. -side. We also like to have a blower. Those are extremely versatile, light, fast, and it really puts the flame out real quick if you uh, don't pay attention enough and you need to put something out. But the biggest thing with controlled burns is you got to have your steps in place. you got to take your precautions because if you don't pay attention, it can get out of hand real fast. So. We like to burn um, into the wind as we start, and then once we get a good enough back burn and we know the flames aren't gonna jump, we'll kind of jump out ahead and then burn with the wind. And we won't go too far 
to where we can't control it, we'll just slowly break the field down chunk by chunk. And uh, sure enough, you know, the field will get burned. Everybody be safe. We won't burn anything we don't need to burn and everybody go home um, healthy. So we're gonna keep working on this. Shouldn't be too much longer. And uh, we're on to the next step of probably spraying here in a few weeks and uh, we'll get this habitat in. Well, we're about done burning the field here that we've been prepping for a while. It seems like a project that always gets pushed to the back burner, but putting Whitetail Sanctuary in this field and, uh, you know, ultimately um, it's going to look really nice. It's going to have some good flowers in it, a bunch of good mixture that Pheasants Forever came out with, I think, well, two years ago now. Um, and it's got switch, and eventually that switch should probably take over that whole field. Um, but we're pretty excited about this. This field isn't <clears throat> real, uh, I mean, really usable in terms of deer hunting or anything like that. So I'm going to put a nice little mix like that in there for Whitetail Sanctuary. The deer do bed up, and um, a lot of fawn bedding will happen in the north edge of this field. Um, so we're excited to kind of see how that goes and how that stuff progresses. Um, but just excited about the springtime here. Um, got the burns going and everybody's kind of out in the fields right now um, getting ready. The farmers are getting ready. So it's just a fun time of year to get ready for the, uh, um, the spring kind of plotting season. Um, but we'll finish this off here and uh, get kind of get pruning the trees and getting some stand uh, spots identified where we want to move some stands this year and, and get ready for the, the new year.